Well, Laodicea was floating. They got saved. Jesus turned their canoe around, and they were floating toward the world's way, but Jesus turned them around. So they're really mixed up. They're not even facing the right way. They're, people think there's something wrong with them, and they don't like where they're going, but they weren't willing to paddle. They were floating with the world. And look what happens. So then, because you're lukewarm, you're not resisting the world, you're not engaged in the grace of God that leads to sanctification. You're neither cold nor hot. You make me sick. Do you see that? Do you know what the exits to every theater and coliseum in the Roman world is called? A vomitorium. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? That means exit. Jesus said, I, you make me want to projectile vomit. It's a gross thing. He said, you're making me sick because you're distracted from what I saved you to be and you sicken me because you're floating along with the world. What were they doing? Well, because you say I'm rich. I have become wealthy. I don't need anything. Did you know that the awareness you have of how much you need the Lord is directly connected to how much you pray? If you don't pray very much, it's because you don't need his help very much. If you pray a lot, you feel his prayer. So usually before tests and when mothers or fathers or grandparents are sick or we haven't got enough money, we pray. Or we're scared of going you know, on the missions trip or the outreach or whatever. We pray because we need the Lord. But the rest of the time, we can handle it. The Lord says, you need to get into a situation where you need me. What does the Lord's prayer say? Give us this day our what? Monthly bread. Oh, daily bread. None of us like that. Do you like being dependent? That's not the American dream. Do you know what the American dream is? Have enough stacked up that nobody can tell me what to do. I, I own my own stuff and I can have anything I want and you can't stop me. That's the American dream. Now, it's crassly put, but you know what it is. Have enough money so you can live in Florida and play golf the rest of your life and go on cruises. You know what I mean? And have the best health care and security system and a nice car. That's the American dream. You know what God says? I want you to get to such a place where you're desperately needing me to even go on another step. I'm describing now the greatest times in church history and Christian life is when Christians needed God constantly. You wouldn't believe what happens when you need the Lord. He's right there. And he helps. Well, what? let's get back to... Um, Oh, and by the way, you don't even realize that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, Jesus is going to zero in on this city. But before he does, look at this. What is the ultimate temptation? The ultimate temptation is anything that distracts us from God. We can set him as the start page of our day and tune our minds to him or not. That's why before I started anything else this morning, at 5.07 a.m., I turned my dish. You guys ever see these houses and apartments and, you know, whatever that have a dish, you know, dish network? Or I don't know all the other ones. We have Starlink where we live. They have no telephone or internet where we live a few weeks a year in Colorado. It's in the mountains. So we have Starlink. And Starlink is great. Starlink has an internal system that follows the satellites. It's unbelievable. If I come in and my Starlink is pointed like this, guess what I know? Something's wrong. It's not going to get any signal from the Skynet, you know, pointing at the ground. You know that, that the DISH network is properly placed when it's kind of tipped up looking at the sky somewhere. If I could look at all of your dishes, your connectors to God, do you know where many of them are pointed? at the earth, at the things. Do you know what Paul said? Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. He, what he's asking is how, how do we use our phones or technology? Because uh, we have to use them for everything. We even have to use them as the key to our door in hotels and everything else without them becoming the distraction. So that's the short version. I kind of summarize what he said. Um, well, one thing I do until I just had to get a new case because my old case broke. But up until that moment, 
My current verse that I'm memorizing, I always tape on the back of my phone. And that became, because remember how many times a day do we touch this thing? You know, over a thousand. Every time I pulled it out, I had to make a choice of looking first at this side that has a picture of Bonnie. The one person in the whole world I would like to spend all my time with. It is a sacrifice to talk to you guys. I'd rather be with Bonnie. I waited my whole life to meet her. But I love teaching you guys, but I'm serious, you know? In fact, I still, I believe I'm going to be able to chase her in heaven. Uh, you know what I mean? The Lord will let us know who we, were, who we knew on earth. So, but how do we use a phone? The first thing I did is I reminded myself, every time I pulled that out, I'd go, oh, 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 before I text my boss, yep, okay, I'm still working on that. And I would text him. So it becomes a tool. Do any of you notice I'm distracted when Bonnie's in the room? I do my job, but I notice her all the time. That's what this has to be. This is like the class that I have to do. But the Lord, I, whenever I, my mind is allowed to go, it clicks back to the Lord. And I think, am I, am I still doing what you want me to do today? How did you want me to fulfill your purpose in my generation? It's just constantly there. How do you know when technology is getting in the way when you'd rather be on the phone than talking to people around you? Have you noticed at restaurants how many people eat looking at their phone and not even talking to the people? They go out to dinner at a restaurant and they don't even talk to the people. They're, they're on their phone for what? And it isn't the phone. That just is the current one. Back then it wasn't the phone. It was anything. So as long as your phone doesn't distract you, from witnessing, reading your Bible, memorizing your verses, living for Christ, and fleeing sin. It's great. 